Being a morning show, you might be watching us enjoying your cup of joe each and every morning. Appreciate you watching. Well, this morning you could be enjoying your cup of joe while we're talking about the cup of joe and how it is made here at Balzac's Coffee Roasters. Happy to be joined by Director of Operations, Will Thorburn. Uh, <laughs> good to see you, pal. Yeah, you as well. Thank um, you. First thing, we started on, those are beans. Those are beans. They're green. They're green. Yeah, that's you how get they that question a lot. I didn't know yeah. they were green. Yeah, they uh, they come in green and we turn them brown. We make them good. Because so. we want to kind of show the different steps and yeah. stages of how we get there. First off, we're in Ancaster. Okay, right. uh, let's go back a little bit into the history of Balzac. Started when? In 1993, the first cafe opened in '96, Stratford, Ontario. Stratford, Ontario. Yeah. Been in this area for how many years now? We've been in Ancaster for about six years. Cool. Yeah. Okay, what, what makes this area so great for you guys? You know, it's relatively central to the cafes. So we've got cafes in Toronto, we've got a cafe in Kingston, Ontario, Niagara-on-the-Lake. So we're, we're a little bit spread out, but Ancaster is a good central location for us. What's the count at? How many, how many cafes? 17. 17. Goodness. Okay. And you guys are gourmet coffee. Gourmet what make, specialty, what, yeah. Okay, what makes a uh, gourmet specialty? So it's it's the grade of coffee that we've that we've decided to purchase for the entire time that we've been roasting coffee. This bag, do you know where this bag's from? So this is from Colombia. Okay. Yeah. So coffee scored on a scale of zero to one hundred, and the coffee that we buy is eighty points and above, which makes it specialty coffee. So seventy nine and below, non specialty. All of our coffee is specialty grade coffee. Who's making good coffee beans these days? I mean, I'm, I'm partial to Colombia, but I mean... Just personal the, preference? The personal preference, and that's, and that's what it is for everyone, right? Uh, some coffee is really, really beautiful in almost any country in the world. You just need to know, you know, where to get it and how to roast it and who to buy it from. This one here? Yeah, so this is a coffee from Ethiopia. Um, it looks exactly the same. Or does it? it? To you? It looks very similar. It's different to me. It's a different process for how they get the coffee out of the cherry. So some people don't know that coffee's grown on a tree in a cherry. There's two of these per cherry. So you can imagine how many cherries had to be picked to make this bag. So, you know, different levels of, of, of processing for getting the coffee out of the cherry and to us. But uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful one from Ethiopia. So then you're doing blends where you're combining. Yeah. You can combine Ethiopia yeah. and Colombia yeah. and Peru yeah. and wherever. Exactly. Like how many how many areas are you getting coffee beans from? We get a lot of our coffee from Central and South America. So uh, and then a little bit from Africa as well. That's the ideal spot to uh, we got in there, a little bit in there. <laughs> a little bit in there. Um, why are those areas so great? Uh, you know, the coffee really has good flavor profiles coming out of those different countries. Oh, you picked a good one. This that is looks a little darker, does this it? This is decaffeinated coffee. So this yeah, is Swiss right. water decaf. Yeah. How do you do that? So there's a, a whole process through a company, Swiss Water, um, that they've been able to master, which pulls out, I think, just over 99% of the caffeine content in coffee. Pull it out. Pull it out and leaves the flavor intact. And hence it's not as green as, let's say, this one here. Yeah, exactly. So you can see the color difference between the decaf and the regular coffee. This is a beautiful coffee from Costa Rica. This is, uh, yeah, this is a coffee that's featured in a couple of the blends that we really enjoy. Okay. Uh, we're going to hang out for the morning if that's cool. That's because great. Because it's green now. You don't want to be making a cup of joe with no. it still being green. It needs to be roasted. So you let's need to, uh, uh, turn it brown. Turn it brown. We're going to be <laughs> <laughs> turning it brown. <laughs> <laughs> the Balzac's uh, Coffee Gourmet in, uh, or, Balzac's, let me get the name, Coffee Balzac's Roasters. Coffee, Coffee Roasters. Roasters. And by it. the end of the morning, hopefully I get that <laughs> right. Back with Will and the gang on Morning Live. This one's on me. I'll let you get the next time. We go out for coffee. Release the beans. <laughs> morning, everybody. Have you ever been to Balzac's? Coffee roasters? Sorry, it was too easy. It's right there for me. I just had to get out of the park. Uh, good to be back at their operation facility in uh, Ancaster. Director of Operations, Will. We got Russell here working the machine. What is this machine that Russell is working? So this is a Loring 70 kilo coffee roaster. So the uh, the burlap bags that we saw of green coffee, it's about 150 pounds per bag. One bag can go in this machine and roast at a time. So it'll roast 150 pounds, about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on what we're doing. And then it comes out, freshly roasted coffee, beautiful. What's the temp we want? I mean, all of the coffees are gonna go well above 400 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So it depends on the profile, depends on what you're trying to do. It, it does vary between the beans. Yes, it does. For sure. Yeah, it depends on depends on what you're gonna do with it. Are we gonna blend it? Is it gonna be a single origin coffee? But the temperature absolutely matters. I yeah. didn't even comment how great you look in your oh, thank bearded you. hairnet. Well, you know, we're all about style. I thought that, right? <laughs> But this is something that's important to you guys to make sure that... Yeah, yeah, we're a HACCP certified food safe facility. So, you know, protocols in place to make sure that all of our coffee is produced in the right way and kept safe to go out to our customers. What are the beans doing right now? So they're cooling off. So right now they come out at over 400 degrees Fahrenheit. We have to stop the roast process so they don't get too dark. So it's cooling off. In about five minutes, it'll be room temperature. So if you touch that when it comes out, you'll scald yourself. In five minutes, it'll be totally fine and ready to get packed. And then we have the next batch ready to go in. These are back to the green beans that we saw in the first, yep. first segment. Yeah, exactly. So those are all loaded up, ready to go. They're gonna get attached to the machine, pulled up to the hopper. Russell's gonna be selecting the roast profile. Once it's all good to go, it drops into the roaster. 15 to 20 minutes later, it's the roasted coffee. How often do you roast it? We're roasting five days a week. Right now, um, you know, anywhere from you know, six to nine hours a day, um, 360 plus days a year. We're pretty busy. So then once it comes from there, we're going into these big containers here to yep. get ready to start packaging up our coffee. Yep, exactly. So there's a few different ways that you're doing that. You're packaging up your own, but then you're also shipping some out too. Yep, exactly. So we're sending roasted coffee to some of our co-manufacturing partners, but we're also packaging a lot of our own coffee here in Helsin and Ancaster. So this is a finished batch of blended coffee that's gonna be good to go over to our packing line. You already know that this is, you blended, you roasted together blended? So we have a couple of ways of doing it. We, sometimes we're roasting coffee separately and then blending. Sometimes we take, we take multiple coffees in their green form, blend them before they go in the roaster and then put them in the roaster. Who knew all this was going on? A lot of times it, it just shows up with the coffee. Yeah, no, there's, there's some thought process that goes behind it for sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, let's take a break because, so let's go to the next stage. Let's go to the packaging stage. I know their guys are, guys and gals are kind of getting set up doing that and then we'll finish. We got to pour out a few coffees. We come back to Bozak's Coffee Roasters on Morning Live. Like a cup of coffee? We got a little bit for you here at the Balzac's Coffee Roasters, really kind of pulling back the curtain and seeing how everything uh, runs. We have Kevin doing his thing, because the packaging, we saw, we saw the original beans, then we saw the beans get roasted. Now we're getting packaged up. Back here with Will, head of operations. <laughs> see the process to see how it ends up yep. at your cafe, 17 yep. cafes around the region, or in your local grocery store. Take us through this and, and how all this works. Yeah, so this is our packaging line. So what Kevin is doing is using a weigh and fill machine to make sure that we have our 12 ounces of coffee in the bags. Once it's in the bags, he's putting it through a band sealer to make sure that it's sealed properly. You wanna make sure that your coffee is always sealed nice and tight. Cause that's the thing like, does it matter sitting on store shelves? Cause sometimes you don't know how long it's gonna be sitting on there. Yep, exactly. So you wanna make sure that the packaging is, you know, of the highest quality to make sure that you're keeping all that freshness in. These bags are specifically designed for coffee, so they've got a one-way valve here to make sure that the natural occurring gas. Did you see the valve? Yeah, this guy here. So coffee will naturally give off CO2. So when it's nice and nice and fresh, that coffee's bleeding off gas at a very slow pace to make sure that it's capturing all that freshness and it's not letting everything out at once. If you don't have that, this bag will puff up and like pop. What's Which the, is just kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. What's the blend we got going on here? So this is Bard's blend. So this is a coffee that we've had out for a number of years now. This is, um, uh, this is a blend of a Central American coffee and a coffee from Ethiopia. Really, really beautiful coffee. It's a naturally processed, nice and floral, very unique. This is a coffee that we're really excited about. These are beans. The popularity of the compostable cups. Where are we at with that in your guys' business? They've really taken off in the last couple of years. Uh, we, we developed those uh, to, with the idea to swap out the single serve plastic cups. And they've, they've grown in our retail space, going through our you know, grocery customers. The cafes are taking off, e-commerce has really taken off. We came up uh, online with Amazon this year and the pods have exploded. So they're really doing well. Now you're not doing that here? No, so we work with a co-manufacturing partner, so we roast all of our coffee here, ship it to them, 
they manufacture and then sells out from there. And, and kind of goes from there. Because, yeah, you're just seeing that more and more because people are, don't want to make a whole pot. Right? Exactly. Because they just, they just kind of want the one off. Um, speaking of that, we haven't had a cup of coffee yet. Yeah. <laughs> How many have you had today? Uh, just one, waiting for you. <laughs> How many would you normally have? Two to three. Two to three. Yeah. I'm not even a coffee, I was saying that, I'm not even a coffee guy, but for, but for Will and the gang of Balzacs, I'm having a coffee today. Look at it, everybody. We'll come back on Morning Live. Caffeine, caffeine, caffeine. Makes you happy. Morning, everybody. Welcome back to Balzac's Coffee Roasters. We were actually supposed to be here last Monday because the segments would air on Tuesday, which was Gourmet Coffee Day, National Gourmet Coffee Day. We've done 50 centimeters of snow fell, and we weren't here, but we're back. <laughs> Great to be back with, uh, with Will. And Will, are you, you, would, you would describe yourself as a uh, bona fide coffee nerd? Uh, I've been known to be called that, yeah, over the years. <laughs> You've been in the industry for how long? Uh, going on 16 years. Okay, and started? As a barista. As a barista. Back in Calgary, Alberta, yeah. There you go, Shadow Calgary. And there you you're go. now as the director of operations. So you're, you're actually scaling out the amount of beans that you're going to be putting in your coffee? Yeah, that's right. Why? <clears throat> so, you know, if you, if you go into coffee nerd land, you might be concerned about your ratio. So how much dry ground coffee is going to go in and how much liquid coffee you're going to pull out. Okay. What, kind of, how, what kind of coffee are we making or how are we making it? So this is our winter blend. Okay. Uh, so this is a really beautiful coffee that's, that's seasonal. We don't make it all year long. So it's just here until the end of February. So What's the beans in there? Uh, so again, Central, uh, South American, and uh, Africa. We have coffee from Ethiopia. Okay. And everybody has one of these on their counter at home. So that, <laughs> that works out. But this is a... So this little grinder so here at the, at the tasting room at Balzac's in Ancaster. Okay, throw that in there. And how are we making our coffee today? So we're going to use what's called a Chemex. So this is a, this is a pour over uh, brewer that a lot of people do have at home. It's really, really beautiful. Um, <clears throat> and it brews a nice, clean cup of coffee, which is why You're I really You're setting up your it. timer on your I phone. I have my timer, yeah. Timer's ready to go. So here we go, we're gonna start brewing. So what you're gonna see here as I start brewing our coffee is you're gonna see a nice plume of bubbles come off the coffee. So this is, this is called the bloom. So this is all that natural CO2 built up in the coffee that's now releasing. You look, at, you look for that in fresh roasted coffee. So coffee that's you know, roasted nice and fresh from the plant, coffee that's been packaged properly, it's gonna give you a nice visual cue. How long that, when are we stopping that? So we're gonna go probably about four to five minutes. And then four to five. Four to five minutes. Is this how you're making your coffee all the time? Like it's a little bit more elaborate. It's, you know, it's, it's a part of the, the routine, right? But you can have your coffee in other ways. Like you just have a fan of coffee. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, you can have your coffee, you know, in, in your home brewer, espresso machine, well, obviously. There's some issues like a snobbery <laughs> around coffee, right? There can be, there can be. But, you know, at the end of the day, we, we value the producers that make it. And, uh, you know, we, we love to drink whatever's offered to we us. We have one ready to go. We, we have, have one ready to go. to see that whole thing. You That's right. Pour, you want to pour us a couple cups? We didn't mention water. How much does water play in? So water is pretty critical. I mean, you want to make sure that if you're brewing coffee at home, that you're using, you know, whatever freshly filtered coffee you can get. A Brita is fine. Uh, make sure that it's nice and cold, filtered, heated up to, you know, about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. If you can track that in any way, coffee nerds tend to have the, the tools to do that. And then away you go, you brew. About uh, milk or sugar? Or is that, is that a, a no-go? Uh, to some people it's a no-go, but, ag <laughs> but again, we don't, we don't judge. Coffee is coffee and we love well, it. Well, so. because let's say if you didn't like that's how you can alter your experience through yes. milk and yeah, sugar. Yeah, that's how you can make some coffee more accessible to, to other people. This. Now again, I'm not a huge coffee guy. That smells so good though. This is a winter blind. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Cheers. Cheers, sir. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the tour. Great little facility you have here. 17 cafes uh, around the region, and of course, you can go online to Balzacs.com.